Horsepower and traction are the essence of MotoGP racing, making a powerful engine and grippy tyres an absolute must. However, that's not all. They need to be connected in just the right way to make the combination perfect. And this is where the swing arm comes in. So to understand just what role the swing arm plays and the importance it has, we enlisted the help of a couple of experts. Basically, the, the swing arm is a, is a part of the chassis. It works uh, everywhere during the, uh, all the action of the motorbikes. Uh, is, it is uh, very important for start, for example, because it must be enough rigid to support the, the load of the engine from on first gear where we use a very, very, very high, high push on the, on the rear wheel. And then, um, moreover, we, we're going to use it on a, on, on the um, braking area because it must be enough, uh, enough stiff and, and stable to support uh, all the stress we have in, the, in this uh, very high deceleration uh, time. And also mid-corner mid -corner area is so important because it must be uh, able to absorb uh, all the vibration and, and bumps of, of the racetrack. Well, you know, the swimming gum is one piece but is a, is a combination of I should say four, four very strategic points. So it's the suspension related to the swimming gum, to the linkage and to the pivot position. If the swimming gum is fixed to the chassis by the pivot. At the pivot they have the position which you can change. Then you have the suspension who transfer the movement to the, to the swimming gum through the, the linkage who, who make the distribution of the, wheel, the total wheel rate to the wheel. With these four parameters, they're working together and you're looking always for the better grip, the better traction, the better stability. And when you try to uh, set up the bike, you, you have to think about, okay, if I, if I modify the swimming arm, it will make some effect on the suspension, or I have to adjust the suspension, or I have to adjust the linkage. The racing swing arm, uh, as, you, uh, as we can see, is a pretty much a big, big, big piece. It's not that heavy, but uh, it's, um, it's very well done, because uh, there is um, all the force coming from, uh, from uh, all the force of the engine coming from this way, this side, because the chain pull, and then uh, this side actually work uh, on a mid corner where we need uh, lateral uh, ra lateral uh, stiffness, and and also in that in that direction. I mean, is important because must must support uh, all the stress of uh, of mid corner and changing direction on, on braking as well because because when you brake you have also a kind of force push on the rear tire and must fall off the ground and absorb all the, all the stress in this, uh, this, uh, in this action. They have a torsion, you know, they have a torsion like this. This torsion uh, gives to you the, the, the feeling from the tire. I mean, if the, the, if the, the swimming end is too stiff, so for sure it will put a lot of pressure to the casing of the tire and then the bike maybe will not turn. So you always have to understand what's happened with the torsion of the swimming gum and what you are looking for. The stiffness of the swimming gum is related to the material, the length, and uh, so you have to understand every time what, what, what is happening. No? But the swimming gum, of course, is, is, is moving, is, you have a big torsion. Then we have to understand if we want more torsion or less torsion with a longer or shorter swimming gum. Swimming gum is very important, but if you make one change in the swimming gum, you have to compensate with another, another thing. Some change have to go together, some change have to be, to be uh, compensated, you know. For example, if you have, you know, the, the swimming gum have one angle, you know. If you move the, the swimming gum in, so the rear suspension become very hard. So normally you have to adjust, but at the same time, the rear height go low. So you can do two things, or you compensate the spring and the right height, or you keep harder on the rear, which make the bike already higher. You, if you have time, you can try both combinations. You make one change and you try, or you compensate, depends. If you are sure about what you are doing, so you do straight away. Otherwise, if you are not sure and you have time, you can try both ways. 